Hey guys, let's do a quick video. Well, if I tell you some of the different permutations of what we're trying to do, it may not be super quick, but it can be easy for you to take a puck of soap and put it in a cup that's a little bit larger than the puck. It's pretty easy to do. And there's some different ways to do it. And you can pick which way you like. The, this is a puck of Williams mug soap. And it's been around for a long time, and this is the modern formulation. I think maybe 2005 was when they switched and took some of the tallow. They reduced the percentage of tallow in the soap, and so that made it a little harder to lather up. And I have used the vintage version, and it, it is better. But this one's no slouch either. It just takes some work. If you're a guy who needs to wake up and whip up a lather in just a couple of uh, you know, in, in one minute, two minutes, then Williams may not be the one for you. But uh, this is not a commercial for Williams, um, but I just wanted to kind of make that point. There are some different soap pucks out there. Uh, fine accoutrements make some that uh, perform really well. And they actually, with this style of Old Spice, vintage Old Spice mug, they actually fit in there perfectly with no need to do anything. Matter of fact, if you can see inside the mug, you see the little, little veins right there, the little spines, they are for the specific purpose of locking a puck down and keeping it from moving. So I imagine the old spice pucks were exactly this size. Well, when they formulated the, uh, and when they shaped the fine pucks, they kept with that same size because they knew that there were a lot of mugs in the industry, uh, not necessarily old spice mugs, but uh, mugs that would fit the puck, that size puck. And Williams is a smaller puck. And so you can, there have some of those apothecary mugs that kind of are have a wider top and, and narrow down a little bit. I think this is about the perfect size for that. Uh, Vanderhagen has some pucks similar to that as well, available in all the, a lot of big box stores out there. And so it, um, my Vanderhagen mug, you know, I'm pretty sure would fit Williams right down in it perfectly. So it seems like there's two kind of two different sizes out there, this size and then the uh, the Vanderhagen, the Williams size. And um, uh, even if you take a, a fine accoutrements puck, uh, I've also got a hard puck of Bulgari. There are just a bunch of hard pucks available out there. And the time may come where you're trying to put it in something that's just a little bit bigger than the puck. There's some different methods. Um, there are some soap bowls out there, some, uh, containers with lids. We call them bowls, even though you're, you're, it's a loading thing. It's a container. It's not really where you build your lather generally. And, uh, Parker Kingsley, you know, make some, there's a bunch all over Amazon and that sort of thing. And so you could even be taking a fine puck or something shaped along the same lines as that. Haslinger is another company that does, uh, pucks of, of soap. Uh, that are, I think the Haslinger are more along this size. And uh, even with the larger pucks like Fine, you may find that you don't have as much room as you are. You, you have too much room in that particular soap thing you're trying to use. Or maybe you have a, a puck, um, a hard tub, a, a tub of uh, soap that you've used up. And so now let's use it. Let's recycle, reuse it so that you can um, you know, have the benefits of the closed uh, top and you're also better for the environment for reusing something instead of duplicating it, right? And so here are some ways to do it. With the Williams, it was very easy. See that? I was, it was very easy to take a knife. On the bottom side, it had the same top ridge with the inset bevel as it does right here, it was very easy to take a pocket knife and just trim that off. And that resulted in a few different shavings like this. And so one of the things that you can do is shave off a portion of the soap. You can use a cheese grater as well if you don't happen to have the handy ridge that's easy to do with a knife. Um, you can also, just take your knife and if you have a flat puck, shave off a corner 
and make a bevel around the edge or something. And then what you're going to do is you put that down in your soap and you can see there's space around it. And then you take what you've shaved off and you just shove it in the gap around the soap. It's real simple. And then the soap is not likely to move from that point on. When you use it for the first time, it may move a touch, but don't be too concerned about that. As long as the soap isn't rotating, then you're fine. Because what's going to happen is after the shave's done, this is going to be a moist area with water and suds. Just leave it alone and that will, I mean, you may want to touch and let it pour so that you don't have excess water in there. But that um, wet the wetness and moisture is going to dry and kind of help to glue everything down together. And you're not going to have any problems from that point on. So that's way number one. Another way is to, you can take maybe a small dish or something like that and take a puck like this and, and set it in there. Put a little bit of water in the dish. Set it in there for a few hours. And then take that out. Now it's got a moistened bottom that's been softened up by the water. Press that down into whatever container you want to use and let it dry. And that's, you're basically kind of gluing the soap to the bottom of the surface. And in many cases, that's all you need to do because that will just lock the soap down in there. Now, the problem with that is you will have an area around the soap for water to collect and things like that. And even with my first method of pressing this kind of stuff down, you'll still have a bit of a gap, uh, depending on how much of the shavings you were able to extract off the soap. And so sometimes that can, can be an issue. It, uh, there may be an issue if, if too much water can kind of sit around the soap, it could it cause it to deteriorate maybe a little quicker. But if you're at the end of each shave, if you're kind of pouring out the excess, I think you generally should be fine. So there's a couple of ways right there. Um, just lock it down with a, a moist bottom soap and let that dry. You can also use shavings to pile around the, the sides. Taking the shavings idea a little further for our third way, you can take your puck of soap and take it to a cheese grater. And I guess you could do it with a knife as well, but the point is go further, cut off more. With a cheese grater, maybe take a quarter of the puck of soap, take your cheese grater and and then until you have reduced the width by about a quarter. And then, just like we had with the few shavings concept, press that in there. And then you've got a quarter of the soap to be able to press around and fill in the gap here. And what that may do is not even allow you to have a gap anymore. And that's even better. No places for the water to go and collect and that sort of thing. Now, uh, if the water's able to collect then some people might be concerned about uh, mold and mildew and things like that. But this is soap, especially these hard soaps. It's a really hard place for mold to grow. And, and so I don't really have a problem with that myself. But if you want to even out the surface, then there is nowhere for water to go for sure. If you're, if that, if that's a bother for you and your, your personality um, or your personal beliefs about bacteria and soap. All right, so that, with that method, there was a partial shredding so that you could really anchor the soap down and fill in the gap. Another way is the full shred. Just shred the entire puck. And when you get to the end and you just have a little nub, just leave the nub alone. Don't try to shred that. You'll cut yourself. Um, and maybe if, you, if the nub is kind of thick, then maybe cut it with a knife a couple times so that it can be pushed flat. And then you just press all the shavings into the mug. Now, some people advocate adding just a little water to it as you're pressing down. I've never done that, and mine has always worked out okay. Some people like to shred their pucks, even if they're not trying to fit it in a weird-shaped container, because the shredding aspect makes it a little easier to load that soap sometimes. Uh, Mitchell's Wool Fat is another uh, puck, hard puck of soap. I'm a big fan of that. I get great lathers from it. And, uh, and so it's another candidate for uh, this kind of maneuver. Uh, so you can shred just the whole thing and just you take and uh, do it on a paper plate or something like that. And then just kind of funnel it into whatever. And the great thing about that is it can accommodate any shape container that you want. 
And so just punch it and put in a part of it, punch it all down, put in some more, punch it down, uh, press it down with your thumbs until you get everything in there. And, and that's all there is to it. You can start using it right away. I've done that with a Williams puck uh, as well. Uh, so the full shred. Now, there's the melting idea. But here's the thing. If you're using a soap that has tallow in it, like Williams, and a lot of other soaps, basically if it's not a glycerin soap, then you're probably better off not to try to melt it. Uh, Colonel Conch has glycerin soaps. Pears has glycerin soaps. And uh, Mama Bear is another company that makes glycerin soaps. There's a bunch of people. Glycerin soaps are really kind of easy to make. And you just add some pre-made oil blends to them and you've got a shaving soap. And so there are some companies out there that do that <clears throat> because it's an easy process. If it's glycerin, then you can melt that. You can do it with a double boiler uh, style or you can do it in a microwave. But I advocate doing it for very short bursts in the microwave and checking it each time because you don't want it to get super hot. Just want it to get hot enough to be fluid. And, uh, and so then you would microwave it in a, uh, a bowl, some type of container. And then when it gets fluid enough, pour it into your container. Very simple. Now, if you shred, if, let's back up. I forgot to say something about the shredding method. If you shred and have those big chunks left, put those in first and press your other shreds around it. And that way it'll all mix together. Because if you wait till the end to press a big chunk in, it might look weird. So put the big chunk in first. All right. So we've got the microwave method not to be used on tallow soaps because it can break down the soap and make it less effective. And I have that word from a, a, a professional soap maker. Uh, so you can melt the glycerin soaps. If, you're, if you wonder if you can melt something, it all, you can always contact the maker of the soap and ask them if it can be safely melted. And those are all the methods I, I pretty much know to get soap into an odd shaped container or a container that's a little bit bigger than the actual soap puck itself. Um, there we go. This is the old spice mug. There are some different shapes and sizes uh, and there it's available on eBay and uh, and like I said, it's per I think the Mitchell's wool fat might fit in here, but I know that fine accoutrements does Haslinger does Williams does. Something else I thought of during the break just now was that you may have a, a mug or a tub that you want to refill. And what you have to refill it with is not a hard puck. Well, we've talked about methods to make a hard puck fit into whatever shape container you want. But you can also, and it's pretty obvious once you think about it, there are Cropes out there, which are combinations between creams and soaps. They're thicker than creams, and they're, but they also can be manipulated and pressed and that sort of thing. Basically, like Sterling, Barrister and Mann, Perrazzo, um, you know, Holy Cow, Declaration Grooming. You know, there are just so many out there. And if you happen to need to maybe move them out of a tub to something else, maybe you're traveling, if you order the four ounce puck from Sterling as a refill puck, which is a nice cost savings, if it's a Sterling uh, product that you want to refill your plastic container with, I think it's great that they offer that option. Well, you see, all those can be pressed like, like clay or Play-Doh. And so it's just a simple matter of taking your empty container or tub and uh, mashing up whatever it is. You can actually, you can dish it out with a spoon press it in there, push it all down, easy peasy. It's just as simple as that. If you've got something that can be scooped with a, with a spoon, then it can be then pressed into whatever container you need. So I hope this information helps you guys out. And uh, you seasoned veterans have probably done many of those things. You could be a seasoned veteran of shaving and be very skillful at shaving, but perhaps you've always used creams because that's just what you got into and you've never needed to uh, deal with a hard puck and so maybe this is helpful to you but there we go yeah, hopefully um, you guys get some good um, good tips out of this for making your hard pucks or cropes fit into about any size container you need take care this is sugar daddy shaves bye